Hi, welcome back to Emma's for Meeple. My name's Mitch, and today I wanted to give you five tips on how to teach board games better. First and foremost, my better half, Morgan, isn't doing this video with me because we went to Origins uh, this past week and she got COVID. So she is locked in our spare room right now, recovering from that. So without further ado, I just want to give you five tips on how to teach board games better because when it comes to my board game group, I am the one who reads the rule books and has to teach the table. And anytime you have to teach the table, it can be a little daunting if you have to teach every game and people don't quite get what you're laying down. So with that being said, this one goes out to all the board game teachers out there. So my first tip, tip number five, is gonna be if more than one person knows the game that you're teaching at the table, only have one person teach it. Uh, if there's a couple players or one player that's new that's learning the game, they don't need two or, uh, two or three people coming at them, bombarding them with rules. Only one person has to explain the game. If you're really adamant about something that you think they may have glossed over, just wait until whoever you've determined will be the teacher for that board game session or board game night. Uh, wait for them to conclude their thought and then be like, oh, did you want to address this? And just ask them that question. Or before you start teaching the game to a new player, whatever it may be, uh, maybe maybe you're just you'll be the pointer. Whatever they're referencing, you'll point to its location on the board or on the reference card while they can keep explaining. So yeah, and that kind of dives into my pet peeves uh, from a previous video of people talking over me or trying to help me teach. She's in the other room. Tip number four, patience. Everyone learns at different rates and everyone learns differently. You might have to explain a rule two, three, five times. I skipped four, I know. <laughs> you might have to explain a rule several times before they fully understand it. And that's okay. For you as a teacher, you have to be willing to repeat yourself so that way it sinks in with them and just be patient. Don't, don't let it get to you. Whoever you're teaching, just be patient with them. They're gonna have questions. You're gonna have to be there to answer them, those questions. You're gonna be showing them and you're gonna be giving them this experience and it's up to you to make it a good one for them. Make it as easy as possible. And with patience, you just, you know, have to be ready for the people you're teaching not to learn at the same rate. You can only go as fast as the slowest person in your group that you're teaching. And following these tips will help you get them up to speed faster. I'm not saying that these are the only tips, there's a bunch of how to teach videos out there or how to do better, but these are the five that have worked for me and being patient in the teach is one of them to where they're gonna ask you questions that you've answered that they that just went over their head and you're gonna there don't sigh don't you know become exhausted with them or it'll make them feel dumb or distraught that you had to go back so it's like just yeah, you know, count backwards from 10 in your head and then say the rule again. Point at it on the board, whatever you need to do. Be patient with them. They're learning. It's something new. And it's up to your job to walk them through that. Board game tip number three. Cultivate the experience to who you're playing with. What do I mean by that? I mean picking the right game. You are the board game sommelier the board game connoisseur, the person who will take them by the hand on this journey and show them that board games can be more than what they grew up with of, you know, the, the basics, the monopoly, the life, I've said them before, but it's, it's up to you to show them that there's more to this 
And just by starting small with this, by picking the right game, picking the theme that will land, you gotta know know who you're playing with. If they like Harry Potter, pick a, a Harry Potter IP. There's a, a million of them out there. Or, uh, if they're really into Game of Thrones, there's a few Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings and Star Wars. Pick an IP, something that will that will get them invested in seeing the journey that the board game will have. And that leads me into my next point of picking the right game for them. Not only are you picking the theme that will hook them, that will get them to sit at the table for two, two hours or so, you also got to pick something light, something easy, where the mechanics aren't too overwhelming. It might have one or two things to where it might just have hand management or worker placement, or maybe it's got just a bit of drafting to it. Pick, pick a lighter game. You know, something that they can catch on quick and you can, you can play a round or two that's easy to learn. I mean, and I know that's for, for tips to give you, saying just teach easier games sounds wrong. But you have to build someone up to it. If you want to want them to play Nemesis, I don't know if you can see it. If you want them to play Nemesis, Nemesis has hand management. It has, um, yeah, like, not necessarily act, uh, worker placement, but it has actions on the board that you can activate. So, to break those down, break it down by mechanics. It's got hidden roles, so play a hidden role game, maybe resistance or coup, and then play a, a hand management game to where once you build them off of each of those mechanics, you're, you're building them up, their knowledge of the board games and what they can have to where you can start introducing some of those heavier games once you've played the lighter ones. So just you're cultivating that experience for them by picking the right game pick and picking the theme, the mechanics that'll work for them. All right, tip number two, and that's prepare. What I mean by prepare, read the rule book, you know, a few hours before your board game night. Just go over it. Maybe there's something that you forgot in the game or set it up beforehand before they come over so that way when when they come out, like it, some board games can take a half hour to set up. Like Merchant's Cove takes a while of pulling all the boat, boats out and the cards and the meeples and setting the boats and having the player characters out. And if you set that up in advance, that's one less thing that isn't going to scare someone new to board game in a way. And when you prepare, when you read the rule book, it kind of just refreshes you on those rules that are, are vague or once used throughout a game to where you're like, oh yeah, that is important in the one circumstance. To where you never want to be accused of withholding rules. The first time you might have played a game, even the second time, you might have been playing it wrong. So it's like after a game or two, if you go back and you read the rules, and you realize you played it wrong, there's no shame in saying, hey, I messed up. We tallied up points wrong. But we had fun, so there's no shame in that. And if you want to play with your modified rules later on, no one's going to stop you. The board game just facilitates fun. It's not rules to live or die by but once you learn the correct way it's up to you if you want to keep keep playing the way that you and your friends learned or play the correct way the, the right way it doesn't matter whatever makes it so that way your group has the most fun so prepare do a refresher read the rules pull out the reference card Go over the actions that you can do. Set the game up. Make it easier on them. Make it easier on yourself. Alright. And tip number one, and this is the most important tip. Manage expectations. Never say a game is easy or simple to learn. And this is one that I've picked up from other people. And... I'm guilty of it. I've said it before, and I will never say it again. 
because when you set that expectation for people, when you say something simple or something's easy and they don't get it right away, or they don't get it in a round or two, it makes them feel dumb and they go inside themselves almost to where they just shut down, they, they feel stupid. To where if you, if you don't say that, you say something like, this may take a few rounds for you to do, for, for you to pick up. Say, say that we'll play a couple rounds until you have an understanding of it, and then we'll reset the game back to round one, so that way, now that you know how to play, and you know what the scoring's gonna be at the end, we can all start on even playing fields. So manage the expectation. Never say it's simple. I, it's, that's the simplest one to adhere to and abide by, but it's one of the most effective ones. Like how many of you can uh, out there are guilty of saying this is easy or simple? Everything's easy or simple after you've learned it. Because then you everything just clicks at that point. You know, of course, if I go here, it'll do this. Or if this die rolls on the explosion symbol, then I'll do double damage. Uh, it, once you <laughs> once you learn something, uh, yeah, of course it's simple, but put your put yourself in the shoes of someone who's never played a board game, or their only experience is something like solitaire or a basic uh, card game, and just think to yourself that they're not going to understand the the lingo of drafting hidden rolls oh yeah bonus tip don't use board game jargon well, and what I mean by that is don't use this is the dudes on a map this is hidden trader or hidden rolls this is uh, area control don't use those terms because they mean nothing to someone who's never played a board game before, or someone who's only played a, a handful of board games. It's... After you've played the game, you can use those terms and be like, oh, if you like this game, this is called a deck builder. And if they have liked that, ask them, you know, I have another deck builder, would you want to play that instead? It's... It's not, uh... It's not superhero themed, it's... It's Indiana Jones themed. Uh, just give them options, and if they didn't like that, uh, ask them like how they how they felt on the game that you played. But to just don't stay away from the board game jargon. Bargain jargon. Jar I jargon's the right word. Stay away from it. Uh, to where the, they they won't understand, and that's fine. It's your job to make them understand. If I didn't mess the video up, that was five board game tips and maybe an extra one on how to teach board games better. Now, if you have any tips on how to teach board games better, especially to non-gamers, please leave them in the comments down below. I'm always looking out for tips and tricks on how to easily, not easily, but better teach games. I would love to hear what everyone has to say about that. So my name's Mitch. Thank you. This has been Emma's for Meeple. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.